Live with Ryan Reese. This is Live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Well, tonight I have a very special guest. You might know him. His name is Raul Reese. He is my father. He's the pastor of Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar in Los Angeles. And, you know, I've had him on my show a couple years ago with my mom, and um, they had to split the interview, but I thought it was important to bring him back and actually um, have him tell his whole story. Because I know a lot of you guys know him from his movie From Fury to Freedom, and obviously he's been a pastor for many years in this area, and he's on radio stations across the nation and around the world. So I wanted to kind of go back to the roots of where it all started and get into the details because I believe the story is very relatable um, of the life that he came out of. There's a lot of people, as I talk to people and people that call into the show, they're going through a lot of the same situations uh, that he went through at a young age. And um, just currently stuff that he's going through now in his life, it's so relatable. So I want to go ahead and welcome my dad. Dad, thank you for for being on the thank show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. And we know we only have an hour to talk right now. All right. And you have a big story. So I want to dive right into it. Um, you weren't born here in America. Tell us about how where you were born and how you even, that whole lifestyle where you grew up. Yeah. First of all, my mother was born in New York City in Manhattan. She came, uh, my grandparents came from Spain. From Galicia, they went to New York. As a matter of fact, they're in that uh, that historical fact in New York City. Yeah, uh, we went to New York yeah, on Long Island, right? right? Long uh, Island, uh, yeah. Uh, no, Rake, what's Rake, that? Rikers that, Island or uh, Par- I, I know not Paris. Is that where the jail is? I don't know. <laughs> oh, you forgot now. <laughs> but their names are there. Yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. And I was blown away when I saw that. So my mom, you know, went to Mexico City uh, to visit. Yeah. And somehow she met my dad. My dad was Mexican German, you know, and his dad left very very young when he was very young, mm-hmm. kind of disappeared. And yeah, so my, he, he came from Germany to yes, Mexico, but yes. then he ended up disappearing. Like, yeah, never he, found he met my grandmother, you know, they got married and somehow, you know, he left. Mm. And we don't know why, whatever. My grandma never told us, you know. Yeah. So my mom and dad met. They got married. And then they had me, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, as time, you know, began to move on as I, I was growing up, I can remember. What, what 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 were they doing for a living down there in Mexico? My dad was working for the bank, the, okay. the bank, the Mexico bank. And yeah. my, my mom was, uh, I don't think she was working. Okay. I don't remember working. Just being a mom. But, yeah, what, what happened is they met, they got married. And then as I was growing up, my father, you know, he loved to drink. Yeah. I mean, that's what happened. He, I don't know, he, he, early in life he got drinking. But he always used to take me to these bars that he would go, you know. And uh, he would he would leave me outside by a uh, newspaper stand waiting for him. So you just hang out in front of the yeah, bar? Yeah, I hang out. He, I would sit there and he would be inside drinking, waiting for me to come out. And then when he would come out, you know, he would be drunk. And he had a scooter, you know, one of those like yeah, big yeah. scooters. Uh-huh. And so I get on the back and he we go home. You know, and we go home. He get home, and what would happen? I mean, imagine at five years old, he we get home and he starts yelling at my mom and starts physically abusing her. Yeah, physically abusing her. Yeah, drunk. So, drunk. Uh, and this went on. I mean, for a long time, you know. So, and I went with my dad to to work many, many times. But I went to nightclubs or bars all the time, mm. and it really affected my mind, especially when I saw him abusing my mom. You know, which I began to hate my mom. And I began to well, hate, why'd my you hate your mom. Well, because she never, I mean, she never really did anything. Mm-hmm. You know, she, I mean, she was abused, which I feel sorry for her yeah. because she was hurting. Yeah. I mean, really hurting. But you know, as a little kid, you look at your mom and dad and they're fighting and arguing. So you get kind of a resentment for both of them. Yeah. And I, I, I remember when I, one time my dad, I, I, I was in, uh, coming home from school and I got a rock and hit this kid on the eye and opened his eye. Uh, he almost went blind because mm-hmm. he was picking on my brother. Uh-huh. So, so they came to the house with this kid, you know, bleeding the whole thing. And I remember my dad, man, man whipping me big time and then putting me in a dark room, you know, for a whole day. And I could hear the kids outside, you know, playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and uh, I mean, as a kid, yeah. you know, you hear these guys playing and you can't play. Mm-hmm. 
so, you know, I started having these situations where I started having anger by heart. And then my grandmother, my Mexican grandmother, she took care of me. Mm-hmm. You know, she would take me to her house. And I would be with her. It was so cool because she would, she became like my mother. And my mother became jealous of that. Wow. You know, but she was a real mother. Mm-hmm. And so as as time moved on, I started growing up and going through all these, I mean, the same thing, drinking, a lot of fighting, emotions. Yeah. all that emotional stuff, you yeah. know. So when I when about 10 years old, mm-hmm. my dad uh, had been, you know, same thing, hitting my mom, the whole thing. So but my was mom. Was he cheating on your mom at this time? Or was he, or was he going after girls? Or was he just. A you know, I, I don't I don't know if. I mean, I know there were women, but I don't know how many know. women. Yeah. Yeah. But at this time, he came home really drunk. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what my mom had done. Because my brother, my sister, the other sister was a more yet. She woke us up in the middle of the night and she said, hey, get dressed. We're leaving. We, we thought we're leaving where? So the next thing I, re- I, I understand, we're at the airport. And so we get on this plane, it was 1957, and I get on this plane to go to California to come to L.A. Mm-hmm. So we fly, I get down to Tijuana, you know, my aunt and uh, my grandma, they pick us up. We go across the border because my grandparents have been in America for a long time. And so yeah, how, we, how'd you guys even get over the border back then? I mean, okay, my mom was an American citizen because oh, she, she was born in New York, you know. Oh, that's yeah, how you, yeah. Oh. Okay. We were not, so, so they told us not to not to see any kind of border. <laughs> so we didn't say nothing. So you no. jumped the border. Yeah, I jumped the border, <laughs> man. I'm a wetback. <laughs> you know? That's so a- it, it's uh, crazy. So we got over, and, uh, you know, we began our new life. Yeah. But what was interesting is my dad, in the next two years, mm-hmm. you know, he started writing to my mom and calling her up and saying, hey, I would like to come and be with you guys. And, and I said, Mom, do not come. Do not let him come to America. You know, I hated yeah. him so much. Much. And over two years, my mom, you know, got to see whatever, and uh, she had my dad fix his uh, passport to come over. He never got a citizenship ever. So ever. you guys got citizenships we got you, citizenship. because your mom's American. Yes, uh huh. So but easy. I got swore in at the age of eighteen years old when I was going to, into the Marine Corps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. going back, so so know, wait, your dad came over. So he yeah. ended up coming from Mexico. From Mexico, he got a job at the Bank of America. Okay, my mom worked at the Union right Bank here in downtown LA. Yeah, and yeah. so I mean, we uh, we lived in uh, my mom and dad lived in LA. Us then when my dad got home, you know, he came over. Yeah. We lived in LA. By my grandparents who live upstairs, we lived downstairs. Was that East uh, LA? No, that was there. Uh, what is it? Bunker Island or. Uh, Bunker Hill? Bunker Hill. You live there? Bunker Hill? Yeah. Uh-huh. No I live there. Yeah, I live there. That's crazy. Uh-huh. And before they all take it down, you know, yeah. I live there. So from there, we moved to Montebello, yeah. which I started. As a matter of fact, I started Catholic school here in L.A., Our Lady of Loretto. That's, once we moved, we went to uh, Montebello. I went to Greenwood Grammar School. Mm-hmm. And I went to uh, Montebello Junior High School. But you weren't you like an altar boy or something in the Catholic uh, uh, Yeah, at, the, at, at one point. Yeah, I was an altar boy. <laughs> See, people, I want to talk about this stuff because yeah. people don't know this Yeah, stuff. I was an altar boy. It was kind of funny because I would do masses. <laughs> And I always look at the priest in the, the back after mass. He take that little wine bottle and start drinking it. <laughs> and I go, "Wow, he's supposed to be the spiritual guy, you know." So you know, through all that stuff, yeah. you know, I was I wasn't really religious. Yeah. So what happens is we move to uh, Montebello. Yeah. In the Montebello, I go to Greenwood uh, Grammar School, then junior high school Montebello, mm-hmm. and then my dad and mom decided to move to Bond Park. Okay. You know, they bought a house. All right. So we bought a house. We moved to Montebello. I started going to um, uh, Bond Park High School. And that's where I met Dale and Albert and all these guys. Yep. But my mom, my dad, still, still continued to drink. Mm-hmm. Still well, continued your mom, to drink. Your verbal. mom wasn't drinking. No, right? she never drank. But your dad, she, my your dad, dad was, was very verbal alcohol. and yeah. physical. And so when I was in high school, I had this anger in my life, missed so much anger, that I said, man, one day I'm going to kill my dad. Mm-hmm. And, and, and all my friends know I was very violent, you know, and that's what I, I was known for. Now, never took drugs, never really drank. Yeah. But my, my violence was so heavy, you know. That, that was basically your, basically, your thing is, is fighting. Yes, the police yeah. knew it. So when everything, anything happened, they come to my and pick me up. Yeah. Or, you know, where I was, you know. So as, as high school went through, you know, I was an F student, yeah. <laughs> and I got kicked out of school all the time. But I graduated from high school. But wait, hold on. Before you graduated, uh-huh. though, you met mom. Yeah, well, your mom was in high school with you. Yeah. She came from Chile, 
1958, I think it was, and she came to America with her parents. They were missionaries. So how, wait, how old was she back? Do you know roughly? She when was she, 15 years old. So she was 15 when yeah. she left South America. She was raised in Colombia and Chile. Yes, yes. So she comes from South America. She comes America. from South America, from Chile to here, and then goes into ju- it, high school. High school. She goes into Barron High School. And I'm there. So what happens is weird. What happens, our, lo- our lockers are next to each other, right? Uh-oh. So in our lockers, we're there, and I looked at this beautiful redhead, you know. What, so- okay, so wait, what was the first, <laughs> okay, so I've never even asked you this. So do you remember the first time you saw her? Yes. So was it yes. like you guys, the lockers? She had a boyfriend already. She already did? Yeah, she had well, a boyfriend. Well, that never stops oh, us. No. <laughs> never. So wait, you see this, you, you see mom, where was she, yeah. like next to your locker or just like? Yeah, she was on top of my locker, so we would see each other there, yeah. you know, like an eyeball her, you know. Uh, yeah, she says she eyeballed me, you know, but uh-huh. she had a boyfriend uh-huh. and he was older, you know, uh-huh. and, and I got to him later. But uh, we were in high school. So pretty soon I never, never went with her. She was never my girlfriend. Yeah. You know, in high school, but in high school. So we just kept friendships, you yeah. know. So then after high school, we, oh, when I graduated, mm-hmm. we had the senior party, right? We were going to Catalina after graduation. Yes. So she went on the same boat with me. Uh-huh. So we got to Catalina. You know, we started talking, and it was, so we went into a movie and we watched the 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 monsters, the movie. <laughs> and we, <laughs> and we started smooching. Oh my goodness! <laughs> you know, That's... so we started smooching, and so th- at that point, you know, we knew, you know, for each other. So yeah. we went back, and then I, I already signed up for the Marine Corps. But wait, you got kicked out of? Did you get kicked out of? You got kicked out of school at one point, right? Oh, yeah, many times. So I got oh, okay. oh yeah. well, when did when did uh, you were at a party? And, oh, uh, that was when I was a senior. So when you were a senior, let's uh-huh. talk about this because this was this is what got you to go yeah. to the military. Yes, I, what happened is I went to another high school. I had a girl from another high school, mm-hmm. and so I found her that she was actually messing around with another guy. Right. So what I did, I went to, from the party. I went and got all my friends because there was a lot of people there at the other and, party. Yeah, and we went back, man, and we kicked butt. Mm-hmm. You know, and at that time, I almost killed this guy. So what did you do? Huh? What did you do? I How'd took you... a I took a bottle, and then I took a big box and break it over his head and kicked him and the whole thing because uh-huh. I was very violent. Yeah. So then the next day, because I get all these up. issues that you grew yeah. up with. Yeah. The next day, I had the cops the cops to get me mm-hmm. and they take me to jail yeah. and they're gonna take me to court. Then I'm gonna go to jail. Mm-hmm. So what happens is I go to court and I tell the judge, "Look it, can I go into the Marine Corps instead mm-hmm. of going to jail?" And he said, "You know what? We're gonna do that." So he released me. Because this is in the 60s. This in is when 60s, wars break out in Vietnam. 1966, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's when Vietnam was beginning to get hot, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I signed up for the Marine Corps when I was a senior. Signed yeah. up, you know, with my friend Albert and those guys. So when I graduated, I graduated in June. I was going to go in the Marine Corps July 5th. It's interesting because I got married July 5th too. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. what happens July 5th, I go to MCRD. I get there for 12 weeks. I train. Then, I, as a matter of fact, when I trained, I got the high PT man out of 500 points. I became PFC coming out of boot camp, which is very hard. So you, you, uh, know, that, you top physical yeah, guy. Yeah, so, so you graduate top of your class. Top of my class. So from there, we all, when you graduate, uh, before you go to the uh, to Camp Pendleton, they give you your MOS. Your MOS means your 0311, your um, infantry, whatever your MOS is. Yeah. So I was 0311. So they asked me, you know, they give me these papers. I went to the uh, Camp Pendleton. I began to train for Vietnam, mm-hmm. you know, and, and really, I'm an American, I love my country, yeah. and I wanted to fight for my country. Right. You know, it's not like today, you know, where people are against our military yep. and against our country. So when I signed up, you know, I went in the Marine Corps, I was there for 12 weeks, and then graduation, your mom came. You know, with her friend Tona, and then, you know, I mean, it was so cool for them to come, my mom and dad. Down you know, in San came. Diego? Yeah, San Diego yeah. MCRD. So I graduated, I'm going over to Camp Pendleton to train. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm there probably for, from uh, September till December training. Right. You know, and uh, I remember the last two weeks they gave me, a, 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 what is it, an MRR, an IMR. They gave me a vacation for yeah. two weeks, you know. Yep. I, I, I leave. So I went for leave. I, I got your, you know, I met your mom. Yeah. We were talking, you know, and I mean, I was, I was a, do t- a double timer, you know, of course you, because yeah. I was talking and I, and I had these girls too. But dad, this time. is common for, for uh, a man, a man that's not a Christian. Yes. This is very yes. common. Now I understand it. Yes. You know, so what happens, I, you know, she, I mean, she got hurt. I went in the Marine. I mean, I went, I got my orders. My dad and my friend Champ, one of my best friends, mm-hmm. they took me to Camp Pendleton mm-hmm. and they released me there. That was you know, I thought well, this is the last time I'm going to see him. You know, many died in, in, in Vietnam. In Vietnam yeah. So from there, I went and I checked myself in. The next day, they took us by bus over to the U.S. Gaffey ship. 
Mm -hmm. which was going to carry 5,000 troops, Marines, to, to actually to Vietnam. On a ship. Okay. How, how long were you guys at sea going to Vietnam? We were 21 Vietnam? days. 21 days. Yeah, so what happens is we're on our way to Vietnam. We stop in Okinawa for a little time of leave. Then we get back from Okinawa. We go to Vietnam. I land in Oak, uh, not in Oak, I land in, da in Da Nang, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So we get off the ship, and they give us not only our airmost, but they give us our company we're going to be in. And they asked me to be in Alpha 17. That so, was the special forces. Yeah, well, that's to go there, you know yeah. what I'm saying, to train. So I go from Da Nang to Chu Lai, mm -hmm. okay? So I go to Chu Lai, and when I go to Chu Lai, you know, I get there on uh, the 21st of December. So I spend my first Christmas in Vietnam. Wow. And I remember being in this foxhole, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, recognizing, the, you know, we see a lot of guys getting killed. Yeah. You know, so after after Christmas, you know, we I get my first pet, my first patrol. Uh, we go out, you know, and we're patrolling, you know, in the evening. It's a nine and actually a nine ambush. And in that night ambush, you know, we got attacked mm -hmm. and um, two of my friends got killed. And so, you know, in the Marine Corps, we have a saying, you carry your wood and you're dead. Mm -hmm. <sighs> So I carried back our, our debt, and uh, when I got back, that was I began to start getting um, angry yeah. and bitter, and my goal was to kill every Viet Cong. That was my goal to yeah. kill anybody I came in contact with. You know, in our film that we did, Taking the Hill, you know, I found I found four of my friends, you know, and they tell the story. Yeah. It was really cool. It's, I'm so happy they did that because they separated us to make sure we were not lying and we gave the same stories. So, yeah, that's right. So the film is called yes. Taking the Hill. Taking you can, the Hill. You can just go to the Calvary yes. website, calvarygs.com. Yeah. And find it. It's it's a documentary they did. They they these guys all reconnected from Vietnam after forty years. After forty years, and they interviewed everyone yeah. separate, and all the stories yeah. lined up. Yeah, and they put together this film. Yeah, so. so so I go back, and I'm there in Vietnam, and we're going out and uh, patrol operations. You know, by helicopter. Yeah. When you look at my discharge, I was in now uh, fifteen operations. You know, major operations in Vietnam, which were very dangerous. Yep. I got wounded. I yep. got shot. You know, I went to the U.S. Gaffy. Uh, how, how, how many Purple Hearts do you have? I have two. two I went to the, the sanctuary, which was uh, the sanctuary was a hospital ship. You got I, hit with a grenade too. Well, yeah, that was my first time. I got hit with a grenade. I got blown up, right. and uh, the first I was walking second to the point, yeah. and the kid that was there just got there about six weeks ago. He got his uh, left arm blown away and his both of his legs. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I got, you know, shrapnel. Uh -huh. So they medic me out, and I went to the uh, to the hospital ship for a month. And then they sent me back. I came back to my platoon. She could tell they came to us, all of us. And uh, we were going out. And then one of my friends in our platoon, he got shot in the groin, mm -hmm. you know, and he fell into the river. We picked him up. They took him back then out of Vietnam. Then another one got shot, and we picked him up and took him back. And it was like that. Our life was, you know, in and out, Crazy. in and out. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So then the ambushes and the major operations, you know, we were out in the bush. We called the bush elephant graves. I got pictures. Yeah, the and uh, we were out there for, you know, 15, 20 days. You know, then we come back and rest. And then we go back for five, 10 days to operations. And, uh, and it's crazy because you're out there and you're thinking every day, you know, am I going to be next, yeah. you know? And you really don't think about it, you know, anything. You, you think about your parents. You know, I was saying with my parents, yeah. I really didn't care, you know. But Sharon kept writing me letters, you mm -hmm. know. And through those letters, um, I was, <clears throat> through those letters, um, I got touched, you know. I got touched because here's somebody that loves me, you yeah. know. And uh, so, I, we, you know, we wrote to each other. So I was there now in Vietnam in, in September after being wounded twice. Um, I was sitting there and uh, we went out in a major operation. And uh, some of my friends got killed. And uh, I had to carry them back. And so, you know, I don't talk about this, you know. Yeah. So it was very hard. So I carried him back. And I got to the point that I was so angry that, uh, you know, kind of is how angry I was. And uh, that was never the same. You know, my friend Pete Silva lost both of his legs, which I found. And I had to carry his legs. Into the chopper. Never thinking I could ever see him again. 
but got out of the plants. Yeah. Uh, uh, they took him out, and then in September, uh, they um, they took me and they sent me back to uh, the states. But what they did is they sent me. They they actually in the airplane they put handcuffs on me and you know they, they tied me up. And when I got to uh, to San Francisco, actually Travis Air Force Base, they took me out and they put me in this in this truck, and they took me to Oakland Naval Hospital, which is no longer there. They took it down, mm -hmm. and I was locked up for six months there. Uh -huh. If if you just tuned in, you're listening to Raul Reese telling his testimony. Um, I was there for six months, locked up. I couldn't go anywhere, and I was just getting more angry and angry because all this anger that I had before, yeah. but even more now. Because you, you know? grow up, you yes. grow up in this lifestyle, yes. which your dad's a drunk, yes. he's, he's, he's verbally abusing your mom, yeah. and all that other chaos, and now you're, seeing, you're losing your friends in Vietnam, and you're, you're, you're just, this anger's all boiling up, you're, you're just, you can't control it at this point. Yeah. 41 guys, man. Over 41. The so and, now, that, so the Vietnam, they, they give you like a discharge to send you to this naval hospital. It's like a... Yeah. They what, send you, like, you need medical... Um, you they know, need to my check your... problem my mind. They're, they're checking to see if yes, you're mentally yes. stable at this point. You know, because I only have two months left in Vietnam. Right. You know, so they said, well, we're not going to keep doing So they send me. I go back to this place for six months. I'm locked up. It's the first time they call Sinanan, mm -hmm. where you sit around a group of people and they try to talk to you and they want you to talk about your feelings. It's like a psychological yeah. thing. And so every time I would sit, man, I would just rebel <laughs> against it. Yeah. You know, because I didn't think I should be there. And they couldn't put up with me. Well, you weren't mentally crazy. No, you no. were just angry. Yeah, angry. Right? So after six months, yeah. they go ahead and they dismiss. They actually let me go to Camp Pendleton. So when I go back to Camp Pendleton to wait for a discharge, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, and uh, I'm not doing anything. Just bitter. So they take me, they, they actually make me work in the office for a little while, whatever, waiting for my district. Yeah. But during that time, your mom, you know, I, I went to see her and I got her pregnant. Mm -hmm. She got pregnant. So from that point, I got pre she got pregnant. Then they dismissed me with an honorable discharge. They saw all the things I did in Vietnam, yeah. and they gave me an honorable discharge. Awesome. So I was four-year man. I got out two years early. Mm -hmm. So I got out. Your mom and I got married. She was pregnant. I was not a believer. She was a believer. And uh, she started, you know, going to church. She wanted to get back with the Lord. And she would take me, but I hated church. You know, yeah. I hated it. You know, I just rebelled. Then, you know, did you just court, think it was just religion? Yeah, or? religion. You yeah. know, what I mean, just a show. And uh, but you were going because you liked her. Because mo most people go to church because they like the the girl that's taking them. Yeah, well, I loved her. <laughs> <laughs> I loved her. But you know what's so funny about that, right? I loved her, but I abused her. Yeah, tremendously. You know, what I mean, physically, verbally. I mean, yeah. you guys, you grew up with you know, verbally for four years. You know, yeah, where. You know, it was so sad because now she's getting ready to leave me with Rawl and, and Shane. Okay, so just to be clear, you've been married how long? We've been married. Four, no, no, not now. How long? Oh, uh, 50 years. <laughs> no, no. How, wait, no. How long were you married to be, right before you had this moment where she was going to leave you? Oh, four and a half years. Four and a half years. Yeah. You have uh, brother Rawl and you have Shane. Yes. So they're like, yes. they're like Four and five years old, basically. Yes, because you were born in 76. 75. 75, sorry. Yeah. So four, they're like four and five years old. Yes. And they get to a place where mom's tired of being physically abused, yes. verbally abused, and everything. You're not drinking or anything, but no. you're just angry. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're hooking up with other Fighting girls. Like, outside, you're cheating yeah, on her, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're running at this. Also, you you were teaching kung fu at this. I time. have my my you own school. Your own kung fu studio. Yeah, but Jimmy, I have my own school. Okay, so yeah, you have your own school. Yeah. You're doing your thing. So you have you have success in life. Yes, but you're empty. You're angry. Yeah. You're you're mad at the world, and you're you're cheating on your wife. You're just basically all the things that the world does. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, this story is so yeah. it's so relatable because there's people that are listening right now yeah. that maybe they're not a, a martial artist or they didn't go to Vietnam. Maybe they did. Whatever it is, but they are cheated on their wife they are verbally abusing their wife they are physically abusing they are not being that husband that they're created to and be. they're there you guys are listening yeah you know yeah so now what happens mom's like i'm fed up and now yeah. there's there's the women that are listening they're like i'm yeah. about to leave my husband too yes. so my mom says she's well, gonna leave your you. mom you, she goes to church right she said church 
So when she's in church, you know, I'm walking around the house because she's not home and I'm coming. She's going to leave me. Her bags are packed. So I go around the house. Yeah, I pick so you up, see your yeah, bags packed. I pack up my my rifle and I start breaking things in the house. And the next thing that I want to break is the television. Right. So I take my the back of my uh, rifle. I hit the television and all of a sudden, I, God, it works so weird, you know. Chuck Smith comes on the TV, man. She's with his son TV sharing the gospel, man. And I'm sitting there and I want to shoot the TV. I want to get rid of him. I don't want to hear the gospel. I've been listening to your mom yeah, you know, for a long time, over. you know. And so I thought it was religion. So what happens is all of a sudden on my knees and I start crying. You know, I, I don't cry. You know, yeah. I became a sissy when I became a Christian, you know, but I cried. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. And then I put my, you know, my gun down and Chuck began to minister to me. So I, I, I accepted Christ in my life. So I got up and I went looking for your mom. She was at church. So she saw me coming in and she grabbed Roll and Shane out of the nursery and she left. Yeah. You know, and then there was a guy by the name of uh, Popinoff. It was there that it was an amazing person that he prayed over me. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So wait, wait, hold on, hold on. So wait, you went to the church. Uh -huh. So wait, you, you gave your life to Jesus uh -huh. in front of that TV. Yep. And then when you went into the church that night, mm -hmm. someone prayed over you? Yes. So what did you do? You walked up to him and said, pray over no, me? No, I knew down Papa enough because your mom had taken me to church there. I said, non believer. Okay, so you've seen him before. Before. So and why when he, he saw me come you? in, yeah. I told him, you know what, Don, I've accepted the Lord in my life. He said, well, let me pray over you. And they they came over, they laid hands on me, <laughs> and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Dude, that's amazing. Just like that. That's you know? amazing. So then from there, I went home to yeah. see your mom. And when I got home, you know, she was afraid. So I knocked on the door. She would open the door. I said, Sharon, it's me. You know, I've taken Christ. So she opens the door with a chain. Yeah. And she slams the door on me. What I she said, Sharon, open like, the door. I said, I'm, I, I said, I'm a Catholic Christ. And she opened the door and she watches me, right? Not just wait, that day. Wait, hold on. But hold on. She opened the door. But uh -huh. I mean, what'd she say? Did she believe you? She didn't believe me because she's like, you're yeah, crazy. Right. I'm going to let right. you in, but you're crazy. She saw a lot of people like that, religious people. Of course. You know? Yeah. So the next day, well, she didn't. She thought yeah. you knew she was going to leave you, so yeah. she she probably thought you're just you know, uh -huh. hey, I found Jesus. Just let me back in. Let's try and work it out. But Dad, we're going to hold that okay. thought because we're going to be going to break awesome. in a minute. I want to plug a couple things. I have uh, my dad, Raul Reese, in studio, and I'm actually glad we got to do this interview, Dad, because there's a lot of stuff that this is the first time I'm actually hearing. Um, so yeah, so that's that. So basically, um, let me plug a couple things. Um, I do run the movement called the Whosoever's Movement. We are touring the public high school system. We want to come to the local high schools, wherever you're at. We tour all around the world. It doesn't matter if you're in South America, if you're in Australia. We have gone there or we're going. Um, or you're across America or Canada, wherever you're at in Europe. We want to come to you. Please go to the whosoevers.com. Shoot us an email. We'll give you uh, the details how we could go in. We are going into the public high schools. We are doing lunchtime assemblies through the Christian club. All roads lead to the Christian club. So if you contact us, we want to connect. We want to go in. We give the gospel. This last year, we went to 59, 59 schools, and we've seen 19,000 students show up in the public school system, and 15,000 roughly students have come forward and given their life to Jesus Christ. We've given them Bibles. We got them plugged back into the Christian club. Revival is breaking out in the middle schools and high schools. We are in the middle of a revival. Contact us. We want to partner with you guys to go in, get these kids saved, get them plugged into the Christian club, and then the Christian club will filter them into your church. So we would love to do that. If you want to partner with us, please start by praying that God will open more doors. Pray that God will bring more resources. If you believe that God's touched your heart and you want to donate to it, that's amazing too. You could donate to further the movement through the high schools. And if you want to hear any past radio shows or any of the Bible studies that I've done at the at the, uh, Shine Studies at uh, Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar on Sunday nights, you could go to my website, ryan-reese.com. You could get all of our ar archive Bible studies, all the archive shows for the last two years with other different musicians, artists. Uh, I've had missionaries on here even take live calls just addressing real-life issues, what people are going to. That's all for free. Um it's all there for you guys. So I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in every week. And uh, right after the break, we are going to basically continue uh, this story of my dad at the very beginning of the show. He was talking about how 
he was uh he grew up in Mexico City, how he came to America and um, how he just grew up in this crazy radical lifestyle. And then now we're at the point where he found God. My wife, my mom is about to leave him. She doesn't believe him because he's been verbally abusing him, taking advantage, uh, taking advantage of her. And now she's he's about to walk. She's about to walk out the door. And now he's more to with Ryan Race coming that up. Jesus is real. So we'll be back in two minutes after the break. 6173 Or post your questions using the hashtag Live Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say whoop de doo Back to live with Ryan Reese. Don't say it, what you? Loud noises! What's up, what's up? We're back. I got my dad, Raul Reese, in studio. He's the pastor of Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar here in Los Angeles. For how long have you been a pastor, Dad? Uh, let's see, almost 45 years. 45 <laughs> years. Yes. And now, the end of the story, we just talked about how you found God. Now we're going to get into how... Uh, what the process was. Cause a lot of people, they give their life to God. They hear your story. Okay. This guy was radical. He gave his life to God. And then now he's a, yeah. he's a, uh, a pastor of a mega church out here for 45 years. Well, you know what? There's a whole process. There's a lot of details that happen from the point when you found God to where you're at now. Yeah. So let's, let, I want to just kind of walk through this so you could give the listeners a step by step how God started doing that cleanup process yeah. in your life. So where we picked up at the beginning of the break, or right before the break is you, you were in your room, you were at your house. Yeah. Mom was going to leave you cause you were yes. abusing her yeah. physically, mentally yeah. and, uh, cheating on her the whole thing. You are, you're a martial artist. You are, you have your own Kung Fu studio yes. at this time. You have success. You're doing yes. really good. You're yes. at the top of your game in your world, but you're empty. You get your gun out, your rifle, you start destroying the house cause my mom's going to leave you and you go, you go to break the TV, you hit it and it turns on. Kathleen Kumanon is on Chuck Smith and they're talking about Jesus. You get down on your knees, you give your life to Jesus. You say, forgive me for my sins. Come into your life. You go to church to find mom. She sees you come in. She breaks out the back with the kids. Some guy prays over you. You receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm popping off. You yeah. come home, you knock on the door, the door's locked with the chain and you're like, Sharon, let me in. I found Jesus. She's like, you're crazy, Raw. You're not coming in. And you're like, in short, you're like, I promise I gave my life to Jesus. Yeah. She lets you in. Yes. Now, you give your life to Jesus. Mom's watching you. Mm -hmm. 
over this process? What was the first step? You needed a Bible, right? Yes. And, Tell and, us about it. And the it. thing that happens, you know, I, I wanted to thank Pastor Chuck Smith because if it wasn't for him being on TV, I would not be here. And the teaching that he gave to me over 40 some years. So I'm at what the What was house. the process? The process. You I got come, a Bible. Come, yeah, I got a Bible. Went to get a Bible. I started reading every day the Bible. Okay. And then started coming on Thursday nights of the Bible study that he had Costa here. Costa Mesa. You know, Costa Mesa. And then all of a sudden he had uh, services and on Sunday night through the Bible. But what was really cool is coming to Costa Mesa, you know, I still had those problems. Yeah. You know, anger. with anger. Yeah. You know, and, and the Lord already had open doors, you know, in my Kung Fu studio to go to high schools, just like you do. So, you know, you, okay, you were in your Kung Fu studio, uh-huh. but you used to play the Chuck Smith CDs. Yes. <laughs> after, after teaching class. martial arts. Yeah. Yeah. And then people just started getting yeah. saved. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, students. Oh, my students were non-believers. Yeah. So I said, okay, mm-hmm. you guys, we're going to hear Chuck Smith. If you want to stay, you can stay. So 25 people would stay. <laughs> I would put Chuck Smith in the middle. We sit in a circle and we listen to Chuck. So there's a, okay, here you go, listeners. A Bible study happened just by put, put putting the Bible study on after the martial art class that people started getting saved. You weren't even preaching. No, I didn't know how to preach. Of course. <laughs> so what happened? People started getting saved and then yeah. what happened? So then what happens? We started having uh, studies in the Kung Fu studio. Who was teaching? Uh, I'm teaching. So you start teaching. <laughs> I started teaching. And when I started teaching, it's just the Bible. I make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm not a really good speaker, so I'm going over here and going over there. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, people start getting saved. Yeah. So we're at the point now that coming to Costa Mesa back and forth that there's a, there's a first time here Calvary, a shepherd school, mm-hmm. which is 12 of us. Uh, Jeff yeah. Johnson was in a bunch of us at 12, uh, Bill uh, Stonebreaker. We're in this uh, shepherd school. He was one of the original dudes there? Yeah. Stonebreaker? Yeah. No way. Uh-huh. That's so we were in the shepherd school. So we're in the shepherd school for one week. That's my seminary. One and week. From that, uh, from that point on, my life changed completely changed completely. I start going to the high schools. I start sharing the gospel with these kids, man. You know, they, they don't like what I say, but little by little, you know how it is. They start gathering together. Yeah. They start listening to the gospel and they start getting saved. My old high school, Baum Park High School, first high school I ever went back to, Dr. Um, actually, Professor uh, Barno and Hollenbeck, they were the principal and vice principal. They were my baseball coaches when I was playing oh, baseball. Oh, baseball coach. And so I went in. I said, hey, you guys, you know, I came back from Vietnam. I accepted Christ. Can I talk to the kids? They said, uh, no, you can't. I don't think <laughs> so. So they called the back police on me. Yeah. yeah. So the police comes. They asked me to get off campus. So I go home bummed out because yeah. I thought, you know. That, that, I mean, think about it. They yeah. know that you, you got kicked out of school all the time yeah. for fighting. And then you come back. Hey, can I talk to the kids? They're like, this guy, and yeah. he just got back from Vietnam. This guy's lost it. So, call the cops. Yeah. Get him out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens? I go, I'm bummed out. I really bummed out because I think, well, God, you spoke to me. Or to did go you to really school, speak yeah. to me, God? So I went home and I was bummed out for about two weeks. And then the Lord, praying and coming to Calvary, you know, spoke to my heart, says, go back. You know, so I go, are you sure? I go back. So I went back and the door was wide open. They allowed me to come into the campus. I began to sit there because nobody would come here to the Bible study. So wait, where'd you go? Just on uh, oh, the, the quad? School. Were you on the quad? In the quad, where the flagpole was, yeah, right the there, quad. right sitting. And the guys, they were eating lunch, whatever. Yeah. And I was sitting there, and uh, there was this guy by the name of Tony Baca. He was kind of like uh, one of the head guys, you know, of the uh, Mexicans. Yeah. And he was, had a, a like, knife. Like the gangsters. So I, yeah, yeah, so I started sharing share with him, Yeah. you know, and he got saved. And then what happens, it starts, you know, developing where I can sit down and these students are coming to hear the Bible study. You know, so all of a sudden, I'm there a couple months and I say, okay, you guys, you know, the Lord I, says, That's the first guy that ever got the first saved guy, at the high school. First guy. First guy. And I seen him. Yes. I, I saw his daughter yeah. just a couple he weeks ago. He had a big ago. old afro. Yeah. Back in the Not 70s. anymore, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets saved. So then what happens, all these kids are there. So the process of time... I get up and on the spe- a picnic bench and they're having lunch and I say, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know how to preach, right? I said, you guys, you know, Jesus died for you. He came and died for you for your sins. He wants to come into your life. And so all of a sudden kids begin to sit around uh-huh. to listen to me, you know? And so there's all these kids sitting around. And so I say, you guys, anybody here that wants to accept Jesus in your hearts, hey, why don't you guys get up and come over here? And all these kids, <laughs> I go, oh, shoot, what do I do now? <laughs> all these kids come forward. Yeah. So we pray a simple prayer, and they accept Christ. The beginning 
of my ministry, the beginning of my, in the high schools. Because then yeah. I started going to Azusa High School, Bassett High School, Grandora High School, Bomb Park High School, Charter Rock High School, all these high schools. And I had the opportunity because I had my own business, my Kung Fu school. That's amazing. So I go there at lunch times, and this is going on. Kids are getting saved. Bible studies on campus begin to start, and, I, and my church begins to grow the Kung Fu Studio. From there, we move to the Fox so Theater. So your Kung Fu Studio basically turns into a church. Into a church. And then maxes out, and then you yes. move to the, well, it was the Fox Theater the in the Zusa. Fox Theater. I remember that theater. Remember? Yeah. 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 And it's out of, they took it out now, yeah, but we, out. we went there and we had our services for one year. And in one year, a thousand people came to the, to the Fox Theater. So we got to move. Yeah. You know, we got to move. So I'm looking, you know, I'm like that. I look around all over. I find this Safeway store that Dale and I used to go to and steal candy <laughs> when we were. High school, <laughs> right? Because Joseph Eli gets saved, Dale gets saved, Dave Shorter friends, gets yeah. saved. All these guys got saved. Hubble. So what happens? I go out and look at this building. It's empty. So I call the Safeway people. Mm -hmm. The lady comes. We go to the Safeway store. In this, it's twenty-one thousand square foot with the property, the whole thing. So I look at the Safeway store. I wow, I go man, Lord, this would be good to have. So I told the lady, are you selling it? She said, yes. How much you sell it for? She said, $225,000. I said. And this is back in when? Back 70 in what? 70. Let's see. Back in. Well, 70, I was born in 75. 76, I think. Okay. 70, yeah. So what happens is, you know, I said, she says, well, okay, let me. You need $5,000. He said, down payment. So we have in the bank $1,500. That's it. Okay. Yeah. That's why I don't ask for money. So I say, you guys, let's go pray. So we go up and we pray for a couple of days. I come back to my comfort studio and there's an envelope inside. So I pick it up. I open it. $3,500 check plus $1,500 is $5,000. I learned to walk by faith wow. like Chuck did. And, he, you know, I gave that down. And now, and now we have to pay two hundred twenty-one thousand dollars Okay. So <laughs> wait. So you, okay. So you get the. They take that, the, yes. and now what happens? So, so now we have to, you know, build this building. Yeah, because there's nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So what happens is we, by faith, begin to see what God will do. People begin to give. Mm -hmm. So we start, you know, modernizing this uh, Safeway store. Right. Because uh, Chuck loaned us some money. Mm -hmm. So we get this thing done, and the city says, you can move in now until you have the permission. Across the street is the fire department. Oh, yeah. I, I moved there with a 1,000 people, okay? Yes. So they finally give us permission. So the first server starts, okay, yes. first service. Then the second service starts. And then the third service starts. And then the fourth service starts. So you guys are doing four Sunday morning services. Two Wednesday services. nights. Oh. Two Sunday nights and four Sunday mornings. Are you kidding no. me? And guess what the fire department was doing? Counting at the door. <laughs> really? Yeah. So we could so nobody could go in and over you know, overtake the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me. So people. I mean they parked all over the neighborhood. The whole neighborhood was mad because they park every we had outside this is what happened to Jesus people even in Costa Mesa. Yeah. There were people outside lined up to go to church an hour to two hours before staying just to get in outside. The church. To go That's to church. incredible. You don't see that today. Do you not okay? see that today. So what happens? We are in West Covina for two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, 12 years. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the Lord says to me, I tell Dale, I'm done here. I'm moving out. Let's go to San Clemente. Because mm -hmm. I'll have there. Yes. So we said, we look everywhere in San Clemente. Nothing. So Rich from Snyder from the in and out. You know, I got to yeah. know him really well. Uh -huh. So he says, hey, Raul, have you ever gone to Diamond Bar? There's a building there. They're selling. I said, not really. So Dale, I go. So we look at this building. Man, it's huge. 28 acres a building, 115 uh, square foot building, two story, all glass. And I said, there is no possible way. So, Well, first of yeah. all, Diamond Bar is far from... 12 miles. 12 miles. Oh, it's only 12, 12 miles? 12 miles, yeah. Oh. And, 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 and you'll get in a moment what happens. So we're here. But it's like four cities away, though. Uh, how many yeah. what? It's like four cities away. Oh, yeah. Three or four. Uh, five I mean, cities. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's like four yeah. or five cities yeah. away. 
So we, you know, we, we go there, we look at it. And so then, you know, I call Chuck Smith mm-hmm. and Greg Laurie, and they come with them. I said, we go down to see the building, they open the building. We go inside the building, we're looking at it, and we can't believe it. So we come outside, and Chuck Smith's in the front of the building. He is, oh, my, isn't God good? I said, <laughs> good, Chuck? What do you mean? <laughs> we don't even know how much the building's worth, you know? Yeah. So I call the, I call the, the uh, people for the, for the actual building. They say, well, we want to sell you the building for $22 million. I started at $22 million. We only have, you know, with the bill, $1.2 million. Yeah, if you were to sell your own. Yeah, in Wiscovina. Yeah. So I said, well, we're going to pray, right? When Chuck and I and Greg were walking through the building, Dale, yeah. I had this sighting, painful sighting, man. I mean, bad. So I went to the emergency. They told me my appendix. Uh-huh. So I go and check in. They take my appendix out. The next morning I wake up and I have my mom, my dad, my every, my whole family. Uh-huh. And I'm thinking, am I dying? Well, they found leukemia in my life, in my body. In your, your body, leukemia. Yes, so yep. I said, wow, man. So, this so you're about it. to buy this building. Or, yes. or, or God opens his door with this mm-hmm. building. Mm-hmm. You go get, to get your appendix out, and then they discover leukemia. Yeah, leukemia. In, in three days, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, well, this is it. Then. Yeah. And then they brought a Chinese doctor in, and uh, they did some tests. And then, you know, I, I said, Chuck, can you please pray for me? And Chuck prayed, you know, on the phone. Yeah. And Greg, we prayed on the phone. And the next day, God had healed me. Leukemia. God had healed me of leukemia. I got up. I left the hospital by faith. I went back to these people. I said, $22 million, I can't pay that. So they gave us for $16 million, the, the, the actual building. Uh-huh. Chuck loaned us $2.5 million. Uh-huh. Okay. We had no money. Yeah. Okay. We sold our building, $1.2 million. We put that down. Our payment. Dude, Chuck, we, re- dude, he, he took a, help a, us. a risk. Help he us. believed. He helped. Oh, yes. Wow. He went to the board and the board, this is what, and I'm not exaggerating. He went to the board and the board said, with Raul Reese, you can give him whatever he wants. Wow. That's what he said. And I was blown away by the Lord, you know, mm-hmm. that God has given us favor. Mm-hmm. And so we got this money. My payments were 145000 a month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a month. Yeah. Just interest. Yeah. Interest. We didn't have that money. Yeah. Every single month, the Lord gave us that money. I want to be clear. Yes. You never ask for never. money. I still don't even, ask for money. Even today, you never. go to church. Never. You just believe where yes. God guides, God he provides, provides, and He has provided He's for this building to operate. Yes. yes. And 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 people have yes. moved there. Yes. And it has grown. Yes. To, uh, I don't know how many thousands. We lost. We lost four thousand people. We have one thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. when you moved from West Covina, we to lost four thousand people. people. And one thousand followed us, and we couldn't get in the building. So we had service outside for one year, and before God, it never rained. It never rained. In the last during those day, services. it started raining. <laughs> It never Miracles. rained during those services. Yes. So we're in the building. Because I remember going to church. It was in the whole parking lot. Yeah. Because you, oh, yeah. you, you again, Sitting down. You bought, you bought the building uh-huh. and the city goes, you can't yes. have a church here. Yes. And you already purchased it. And we took, we took, <laughs> a, 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 we took the church with us to the city and they had to give us permission for the building. Yeah. So now we're in. Chuck gave us the money. We're in 145 a month, 40,000 a month. Every month he meets, you know, meets our needs of the Lord. So now for, what was it, uh, 10, 11, 16 years, 16 years we have this payment. Mm -hmm. We don't know what we're going to do because every month. So what happens, we're sitting there. And all of a sudden, these guys come in, these Jewish guys that I know. There was a lot of staff guys that you barely were able to build them. A even lot make pay, of staff pay, guys. Uh, uh, paychecks. Yes. Yeah. No, we went without paychecks for about six months. We had no paycheck. We trusted the Lord. Yeah. You know, and we went back to work, whatever we had to do. Yeah. We didn't want to take advantage of the people. Yes. So then, okay, so here we are now, you know, we are making the payments every month by the faith of the Lord. And then all of a sudden, 15 years. We're doing this. Mm -hmm. And then the guys from the in and out, uh, you know, the Lewis's came in and they say, hey, Raul, we want to buy your building. You know, I said, well, how much will you give me? They said, for the 12 acres, which you can build, you know, any church, because it's a private property for building, you know, commercial. commercial. So he says, I'll give you $15 million. Mm -hmm. I said, you will? $15 million? He said, I'll give you $15 million. Not 50, 15. 15. So what happens? He says, okay, I'll take it. So we're in this room. And I, he says to me, well, you and I know each other. No contrast. Let's just shake hands. I could not believe it mm-hmm. that he trusted me. He trusted me so much. So we went ahead and bought it. We got the building. 
pay, you know, paid off. You paid, you paid the 15 I took down the 15 on the building. Million yeah. dollars, and I said, I'm paying this building off. Mm-hmm. I went ahead and paid it off. They went ahead and built their shopping center. Mm-hmm. By the way, what he did, he gave us half of the hill up on the back of the building yeah. for the people up there to pay for half of our water. Yeah. They built us this road that we could go in and out. Yeah. They gave us all of our payment. They paid for it. Yeah. And these are the people that I love and all I still know lines, today. Yeah. Still know today. God did yes. amazing things. He yes. provided. Yes. And he continues. And he always has, always has. I think he always will. Mm-hmm. And my philosophy, and like Chuck gave to me, where God doesn't provide, then it's time to move on. Mm-hmm. That's the way it is. And you've been there now at Diamond 25 Bar. 25 years. 25 years. You believe that? 25 so years. So we have about 10 minutes left. So yes. I want I want to kind of end it on this this note. So... You just had a birthday recently. You turned 71. <laughs> yes. 71. Old, old. But you surf almost every day as long yes. as there's waves. Yes. You're still walking. Yes. You're, 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 you're in great shape. But um, about 10 years ago, about 10 years ago, you had some he- – you've always been healthy, but you've had some yes. health issues where you started getting these little uh, these little episodes. Uh, yeah. They're – or are they there? It's a, is, is it a seizure or what? What is it? Well, well, what happened? What do they is, call it? Yeah, they call it a seizure. Okay. You know, I don't pass out. You don't lose control of your no, body, nothing. but you just can't yes. talk. Yeah, it's eleven years. What happened is, you know, I went. Uh, I was going to go back to Vietnam. First of all, this lady came to me in Vegas. I was in a men's conference. She came to me and she said she was following me. So I don't know what she was following me around for. Mm-hmm. So I said, "Can I help you?" So she went ahead and talked to me. She says, "Look, my husband was in Vietnam. He was." A Marine, but he left me yeah. and I haven't seen him. Yeah. He says, I saw your quiet hope was our first uh, Vietnam, documentary on Vietnam. Yeah. So she, I ever thought about making another one. I said, you know what? Where God needs, he provides. I don't have any money. Yeah. I said, we made it for $50,000. She said, how much do you think today to make a document? I said, well, probably about $350,000. Yeah. She said, okay. She left. Yeah. She left. I went back to the conference. Next day she shows up and I said, can I help you again? She says, can I talk to you? And so she sits me down. She says, I'm going to give you a check so you can go back to Vietnam and film, you know, to do the film. She gives me this check. I open up for a million dollars. I could not believe it. A million dollars. I took it. I went back to Vietnam. I went to those places that I was in. And um, I came back and I started having seizures. And um, I can't. Wait, I'm gonna go yeah. back. When she gave you the check, she says the devil's gonna come. Oh yeah, for she you. told me the devil's gonna. I, I told the devil's always after me. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, these episodes begin to happen seizures. in my life. I can't speak. I can't read. It's been now eleven years, you know, and it's embarrassing to me because I'll be teaching, and all of a sudden I have to put up my little finger, you know, yeah. and, say, and just you wait. Know, so you guys. I wait for a second. They know already. I can't speak. I can't read. So I go in the back. If I start too soon, I start mumbling. Yeah. You know, it's embarrassing. But the people love me, you know. Yeah. It's just. They stay. I've been there. When you're in the church, like sometimes it's you have It's just to... embarrassing for me yeah. to have that. And um, I told the Lord, Lord, if you want to take me, go ahead. If you want to get me out of the ministry, get me out of the ministry. And it's been so long now that, you know, I just had one last night. Yeah. You know, after I thought it was cool, I went in the back and I had a big one for two minutes. Mm-hmm. And, and they're beginning, you know, like longer. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, the doctors don't know what it is. I yeah. went to the VA, they know what it is. So I'm going to a special doctor. They're going to check my brain once again. And so they're going to find that probably they was related to Vietnam, he said. Mm-hmm. You know, it might be right to Vietnam. Like a star so whatever happens, I'm going to continue. I want to finish well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The race that God has given to me. I don't want to be a quitter. Yeah. I want to finish, you know, the race that is before me. And I know God's going to help me. Your mom has cancer. Yes. And my mom yeah. recently, yeah, she has cancer so, now. You know, I believe with all my heart. That God gave me this because I had no compassion on people. Mm-hmm. And God gave me this to have compassion for people, the sick and the weak. And it's been totally a change in my life where, I mean, you know, I've become a crybaby, you know. But, you know, I thank God that he, he changed me mm-hmm. and continues to change my life. Mm-hmm. I want to finish well. And I want my kids to finish well. I want grandkids to finish well. And my wife and I want to finish well. Because that's what the race is about. Well, I think the best thing 
that anyone can do is, you know, there's people that preach the gospel and there's people that live the gospel, the example. And, you know, growing up, you've always been an example. You know, you just always done what you've done. Just follow God. But, you know, growing up, even though I didn't walk with God, but you were always the example, um, that model. So I've always seen that model and you continue to be that model even though I have a different ministry and I travel over the place, we're not always together, but you have the model and um, you are an example to the, the sons, to the, to the grandkids, to, you know, to the staff, to, a blessing to, me, to, to the world, you know, yeah. of what you're doing. So you are, you are finishing. And I'm so excited. Well. I have three sons. I have now grandchildren, beautiful wife. A lot of grandchildren. It's awesome. Yeah. So I'm excited to see um, what God's going to continue to do. Uh, you're listening. This is uh, my father, Raul Reese. He's the pastor for 45 years over at Calvary Chapel. Now for the last, I don't know, 30 years, he's been at Calvary Chapel. Uh, Diamond Bar. Diamond Bar. Yeah. And, uh, and you can find more about him and every the documentaries that he was talking about, about Vietnam yes. and all of his studies. And just a lot. He has a lot of stuff. He even has a movie out called Fear to Freedom. Um, you could go to... Uh, calvarygs.org, calvarygs.org, and find out more information. He's actually on the station on K-Wave every day at 5 p.m. to 5.30, uh, Monday through Friday, and he's on stations all across the, the United States, so you're going to have to find out those stations, <laughs> but um, it's all on your website yeah, as yeah. well. And then he's on Instagram, yeah. Raul Reese, right? <laughs> Raul Reese yes. on Instagram yes. and, and Twitter and Facebook, and you got a YouTube channel. And the uh, the whole thing. Any last words you want to say to, to people listening? If you're listening, you young guys, you know, or older people, whatever it is, whatever situation you find yourself, know one thing. Jesus loves you and he will forgive you and he will use you so you can finish well. Now, if there's someone here that's uh, listening and they've never given their life to Jesus, how do they do it, Dad? They can just pray this prayer with me. Do I'm going to pray. You'll be with me this prayer. Dear Jesus. Please forgive me, Lord, for all my sins. And I ask you to come into my heart and live in my heart. I want to use, I want to be used by you. And I want you to baptize me with your Holy Spirit and to write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's that simple. So now... Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now you have Jesus Christ in your life. You're forgiven of everything you've ever done. You don't have to look at your past life because you're not going in that direction anymore. You're moving forward. You started the new race. It's a new chapter in your life. And now everyone who is in Christ, all the old things have passed away and all things have become brand new. He's going to start doing a supernatural work in your life, in this natural realm. He'll start removing the addiction, the pornography, the hate, the bitterness, um, the lying, the cheating, whatever's going on in your life. Maybe you just have that emptiness in your life. He's going to fill you with your Holy Spirit. So you have that peace that's, uh, that comes from heaven, that power that comes from heaven, and that love. And he's going to start working out all the details in your life. All things work together for good for those that love Christ according to his eternal purpose. So please... Seek God, follow him. Jesus says, seek and you will find. Knock on the door, it will be open. So seek him in everything. Grab a Bible, read it. Find the translation you like. Read it from back to front and watch God move and transform and your life. support the whosoevers. And what? Support the whosoevers. And support the whosoevers. Support us. We want to go yes. to your high schools. We love you guys. I thank you guys for tuning in every week or if you... Uh, follow this us has on been our live YouTube with Ryan channel. Reese. Um, to connect or this, find this out more about Ryan, out click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.